Hi guys, welcome back to Pointy Not Sharp. Uh, yet another package uh, here today. Got some pretty exciting stuff in this one. Well, one absolute bagger and um, some other pretty cool stuff. Uh, today I'll be opening it with a Zeitengewehr uh, 84 slash 98 type three. This is one I'm actually about to do a video on. It's pretty nice, it's a Weimar Republic that's been um, used throughout the uh, Second World War and even has an East German refurbishment on it. Pretty cool. Anyway, let's crack open this pack, uh, package and see what we've got. I ordered this one quite a while ago and um, came by sea, so it took just over a month to get here. So I'm pretty sure I remember everything, but there might be a surprise or two waiting inside. Wow, this is taped up really well. Or this is not the best bayonet for getting into packages. I think it's glued as well. All right, we'll just open the side. That might be easier. Okay, got one side open. Let's see what we pull out. First, Ooh. so this is a uh, World War II production of a VZ-24, uh, instead of VZ-24, I think the correct nomenclature is uh, Zeitengewehr 24T, off the top of my head, but I could be wrong. I'll do a video on that later and I'll have a look, have a quick look at it, what markings do we have? Um, I don't 100% know what markings to expect on these, but it looks like all the normal, typical ones, nothing too exotic. Now next, this is a bit smaller. I'm trying to guess what it is by touching the packaging and I have no clue. Oh, wow. Wow, I thought this would be much bigger. This is absolutely tiny. Like, for comparison, I mean, look at that. So this one here is an Austrian prototype bayonet for the Steyr AUG. Uh, I believe it's called the Ziegler or something similar to that. Off the top of my head, I can't really remember. Let's just come out. Really cool little blade profile. There we go. Ziegler 77. This one's my mate's. I wish it was mine. I'm very, very nice. I thought it would be probably twice as big as it is. This is uh, tiny. Wow. That's the uh, the banger in the other lot. So I don't think anything else is going to be quite as nice as that one. What's this one? Ah, this is Chinese. Um, I haven't looked up what they all are, like the correct names and nomenclature prior to making this video, so I might be a little bit off, but from memory, the Chinese copied the M9 and came up with the Type 95 bayonet, I could be wrong. And um, that's kind of what we have here, except this isn't a bayonet. This is a training knife used by the PLA. Or a training bayonet. It's got no locking mechanism for attaching to a rifle. Um, solid cross guard, but the blade, as real as it might look, is just rubber. With a really flexible tip. That is really, really cool. So, yeah, muzzle ring, but no locking device. So, don't know if I can really call that a bayonet. Um, oh, I think I remember what this one is. Yes, I do. Ah, so some of you might be able to tell just by the scabbard that this is Polish. This is a Polish WZ-55 paratrooper knife. Surprisingly light. The handle weighs absolutely nothing. Like It feels like there's no tang in there at all. I'm sure there is. It looks like there is at 
terminates all the way down the end, but this is an incredibly light knife. Being an ex-paratrooper myself, I understand the need for uh, light equipment. I remember cutting my toothbrush in half to save weight, uh, so I can absolutely see the utility of this. This weighs a fraction of like what the AK-47 bayonet weighs. This is super light, like the wooden handle, it almost feels like cork is so light. I mean, I'm sure it's not, but that's really cool. What marks do we have? We've got a serial number. Uh, serial number again on that part of the blade. Wow, that's sharp. That is really sharp. Got a 1956 year manufacturer and the Circle 11 for polish. That is really cool. So not everything here today is a bayonet. I'm sort of broadening my horizons a little bit. Now, we have four frogs in here today, two Bertiers and two Labelles. And one of the Bertiers has something really special. I don't think it's this one, it's not. So that's a Bertier frog. Uh, I've already got a Bertier bayonet, I'll um, put them together. What's this one? Ah, this is one of the Czech Uton knives. So I've got two of these. This one is my friend's and the other one is for me. Um, it's actually in the comments of one of my videos, someone really highly recommended these and um, I thought, well, I found a couple for a decent price. I thought, well, why not give them a try? Yeah, quite nice. Comes with your, um, is that a file and saw? Really big uh, handle on it, really good grip. Cool. Got a weight on the end of the um, the cord there. I wonder what that's for. Maybe for a plumb line or something like that. Who knows? When you're doing field fortifications, doing wiring, digging pits, a plumb line would be a very handy bit of kit. Still more stuff in here. Don't worry about that. So got another frog here. This one looks like a label. Indeed it is. I don't know how it is overseas, but here in Australia, uh, I've really struggled to find good quality uh, original French frogs. They just don't seem to turn up. I think I've seen one or two sell ever here in Australia and they've been stupidly priced. I don't have a clue what this one is yet. Ah, yep. Just another Yugo M48. While I don't necessarily need it, it was a really, really good price. So, wasn't gonna say no. Oh, coated in Cosmoline. And uh, we've got our original markings on it, so this is not an export version. Pretty cool. Um, still a couple of things left, not too much. I think I feel three more things in here. We've got another frog. This is indeed the interesting one. So much better condition than the other. But what makes it interesting is these markings on the back. So we've got Bray Dunes near Dunkirk. So the Bray Dunes are a location, I believe, just east of Dunkirk, not too far away. Gunner Burbage HF 29540. 29540 was the day that the, um, there was only one uh, British artillery unit in uh, France uh, at the time, and only one that made it to Dunkirk. I can't remember the names, like the 185th or the 195th or something like that. Fifth Londoner um, field artillery unit. I've, I read it a month or two ago when I first researched this and um, it was pretty interesting. They, they did a rear action guard, allowing other units to make it to Dunkirk. And uh, when the German Panzers came, they sabotaged their own guns. They destroyed them. And uh, they just pretty much made their way to Dunkirk as best they could, about 100 miles, many many of them on foot. Half the unit was lost. Uh, it was an absolute mess. And um, 
to find this, considering it was the only uh, artillery unit in France at the time, I'm summarising that this must have been uh, one of their soldiers, gunner being for artillery. So um, I actually uh, spoke to the association who uh, follows up the history of that unit. That unit was disbanded in the late 40s. And uh, they don't have a record of this soldier, but they have a record of a soldier, a gunner Burbage, who died in 1941. Um, the HF, if that's his initials, would indicate this is likely another person. Or HF could be something else, and this could indeed be that soldier. Um, very interesting bit of history, though. The 29th of the 5th, 1940, was the day that their unit was evacuated from Dunkirk. Um... Very cool. Now, what do we got left? Got two more. Got another Labelle Frog. I might stick this one on my Zeitengewehr 102F. Very nice. I'm absolutely stoked on all these frogs I got. Like, as I said, you cannot get these in Australia, and I'm set. Like, <laughs> now this last one. This isn't so much for my collection as this is for my field use. So I'm still a def uh, reserve member in the Australian Army in some minor capacity. And um, I thought this would make an absolutely fantastic field knife. It's uh, another Czech Uton. This one comes in the, uh, the Woodlands camo. I don't know what you call that, but it's not too far off the AMCU that we use in our army. And as I showed you with the other one, very handy little knife, big handle, good grip, a couple of extra tools, and it's got that cord, same as the other. Is that magnetic? No. Very cool. So definitely gonna be my new field knife. Again, this is um, one of my other videos. I think it was the uh, What Bayonet Makes the Best Camping Knife video. Um, someone commented in there that these things are fantastic, and um, I looked into it. They look pretty bloody good, so I thought I'd grab one and try it. Got it for the right price, and uh, that'll replace what I was using. I was using a Benchmade knife, but I wasn't terribly impressed with it. Uh, it didn't hold uh, an edge terribly well. It was made of the old D2 steel. I had it for about 10 years, and um, I was just never really a fan. Had a rubbish handle on it too. Like, don't get me wrong, I know Benchmade bench made, make fantastic stuff, but it wasn't for me. So let's just lay out everything we got. Try to make room for everyone. And then our four frogs. Nice little haul. Very happy with that. If you made it to the end, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my videos because um, I try to churn it out pretty regularly and I'd hate for you to miss it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.